I think I know most of you in the room. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mick Corty. Um, you'll see from the little biography blurb there that I had a 20-year career or so in the private sector working for various reputable and some would say less reputable organisations, but I'll let you work out which for which. Um, I joined the LPP actually three years ago and up until recently was the uh, workstream lead for agency and professional services, a workstream that will always stay uh, close to my heart, I guess. Um, but about eight weeks ago, I got a new and rather fancy title, which essentially translates as Mario's right-hand man. Um, and I'll now give you a little bit more of an overview, a little bit more detail about what we're planning to do for you, our members, over the next uh, few years. But before I get into the, the, the detail of the actual initiatives and the work plan itself, I guess I need to put into context the constraints, or <laughs> as I put in here, the influences we had on us when considering what we're going to do over the coming years. Um, I guess the first and most important of those is what you guys are telling us, the feedback we're getting from our members. I think David mentioned earlier on about some of the things perhaps, um, some of which were perception, some perhaps were, 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 were true about where the LPP um, has, has faltered in the past. And one of the things is perhaps we haven't listened enough to what you've been telling us about what we ought to be doing. And there are certain things over the last year especially that you have been saying, um, why aren't you doing more of this? And I th hopefully, at the end of today, you'll come away with a recognition, you know what, LPP is trying to change, LPP is trying to evolve, LPP is trying to do this for our benefits collectively, and we perhaps need to do our parts as well to make this all happen. Um, Raising Our Game, you know, a hugely influential paper. Hopefully you've all read it. If you haven't read it, um, certainly if you're a procurement professional, you, you, you should, should go away and read that. Um, it talks to a, an awful lot about what Sir David was talking about earlier on. Um, a recognition that LPP needs to be investing and focusing on key NHS spend areas. By the NHS, for the NHS. I think there's a recognition now more than ever that there are areas outside of the uh, procurements um, in the NHS who can bring benefit to the NHS. GPS being one, and we're working on a memorandum of understanding with those guys right now, so that the LPP and procurement within the NHS is focused on the things where we really add value. Obviously, there's an overriding set of targets, which is to increase the influenceable spend up to £3 billion pounds as the steering board target for that, and to drive maximum savings with a minimum target of £300 million over the next three years. Again, at the same time, avoiding any increase in our fees and hopefully stepping down the membership fee over the next few years for, for the benefit of all our members. The work planning process itself... A little bit of a step change in how we've done things this year, to be honest. Um, you probably, many of you won't know this, and many of you probably don't care to know this, but in, in years gone by, our work plan was built in isolation by each work stream and then bolted together into an overall organisational work plan. That's fine, but it doesn't allow an organisation to evolve or to change or to develop because you're, it's continually building your work plan to your known establishment and your known resources. This year, we changed that, we took a step back, and we've built the work plan on a holistic organisational basis to allow us to focus resources and to restructure where necessary for the benefit of the, the wider health economy in London. Each work stream developed a long list of initiatives, taking feedback from the category boards that exist in the work streams or feedback directly from, from trusts. These were then ranked, essentially, prioritised within the LPP on the basis of the possible spend they could touch, the possible benefits they could bring, how unique they were, and if anyone else outside um, the LPP potentially could do a better job. <laughs> and that then allowed us to get to a refined works, uh, work plan for the next few years that I'll talk to in a second. But it did have this, um, it did have this uh, effect of rebalancing or refocusing um, the LPP to a certain degree, which hopefully you'll go away and recognise that rebalancing and refocusing as something that's for, for the good of the, of, of the health economy. What this shows um, is by work stream, just a number of initiatives today and in the future. Uh, and what's, what's interesting is, for data and enablement and med surge and supply chain, you can see significant increases in, in those areas for the LPP. Med surge and supply chain, an area where the feedback has come from you guys loud and clear, we're not doing enough in that area. But then when we look at the resources we've had 
in med surgeon supply chain. To be honest, we've been woefully under-resourced. Data and enablement, the common theme through raising our game has already been spoken to today by, uh, by, by Sir David and the other speakers. You know, the, the, the poor treatment and management and sharing of data in the NHS in procurement is still something that needs to be corrected. The work and the effort that we're put, going to put in to our data and enablement offering, and Lorraine will talk to this in, in, in more detail later on with our, with our partners, PI, um, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely essential for the success of LPP and for raising and to deliver the actions and the objectives within raising our game. So I'll, I'll go on and I'll talk a little bit more now about the actual work plan by, by Workstream. I would, uh, I would say I'm going to give you an overview here all the work streams are here today. So, you know, at the end of the session, you're going to hear two very more interesting presentations after me. But at the end, please don't rush for the exit and get your tube straight away. Spend a little bit of time and go and speak to each of the work streams. Or if there's work streams out there, you think, you know what? Yeah, I'm not, I've never really had a conversation with the estates and facilities guys in LPP. I'm not quite sure what they may or may not be planning. Go and have a chat to them. Get up the stairs, the mezzanine area there, it's a little bit remote. Go up there and, and, and talk to the guys in data enablement and it and about what they're planning for next year. Come away, use today as a, as a means to touch all of the LPP in a very short space of time. It, it, you know, that's, that, that would be a, a message from me. Right. Um, med service and supply chain, well, I won't go through them one by one. The, the, the thing about this is we've added a lot of new initiatives into this area. And I should say, um, we've, we've had a commensurate increase in our resource in this area, or we will do in the new financial year. So we've actually, we've actually restructured ourselves to allow a focusing of effort in uh, med surgeon supply chain. Um, there's 13 brand new initiatives. It's going to be, you know, there's a, a focus, a real desire, as again other speakers have spoken to you before me, on clinical engagement. And there's a very interesting um, talk coming from, uh, from Steve Ryan later on about um, you know, a medical director's perspective on this and how things are working at Bart. Uh, and I think it's something that we need to, we need to really up our, up, up, up our game on. Underpinned by benchmarking. Benchmarking obviously has an applicability in all areas of spend. But the most obvious area is in, in, in med search and supply chain. It really lends itself to, to the benchmarking efforts that, again, you'll see a dramatic shift in what we're proposing for the benefit of you all in, in benchmarking. There's a three-year saving target in this work stream of, uh, in excess of, of, of £70 million. Um, data and enablement, well, and again, another very long list of initiatives. You know, we want to be able to offer the full suite of you know, of supporting technological solutions for you in this area. Raising Our Game, as I mentioned before, talks about the mistreatment and management and, and, and poor sharing of data. We want to make it very easy for, for trusts to make the most use and be, and be sort of powerful pilots of their, of their data and their information. One thing here you will notice, we've got data enablement and IT and T. We're, we're collapsing those into a single technology-driven work stream. Partly because IT and T, and I'll kind of talk about this in a little bit more detail, we've recognised there's an awful lot of stuff outside of the NHS where IT and T solutions for a procurement perspective exist. So to keep our overhead and our costs to a minimum, collapsing our two technology focus work streams together makes a, a, a lot of sense. Um, benchmarking will be a core offering, and again, I won't go on too much about that because I know we're going to talk about that in a, in a, in a little bit more detail. Um, it and t is an area where we recognise that certain things form part of our core offering and things that form part of our core offering obviously form part of our core resourcing and therefore translate into part of your core membership fee. That's fine. However, certain work streams, it and t being a notable example, but states and facilities also being a very good example of this, there's an awful lot of things that are trust may require help on or support on or advice on around the procurement of these elements or these categories which are very bespoke or very specific to that organisation. Now that doesn't mean the LPP doesn't want to help. What it, what it means is, well we shouldn't be doing that as part of the core offering and charging you all for that. 
However, if one or two trusts want to come along, and a good example is the Rio and Cerna re-procurement. Well, those of you who are in trust that, that use those two um, PAS systems, or EPR systems, I should say, will know, potentially, that LPP has helped support the re-procurement of, the, of their alternative frameworks, or alternative solutions to come. However, we've done that outside of our core membership fee. And that's wholly appropriate, because for those organisations that don't have those systems, why would you want to pay for a re-procurement of the replacement? And I think a common theme you might get today when you talk to the work streams outside is, yeah, we do certain things as part of a core offering, but there's other stuff we can do on an as-and-when basis, on a, you know, on a, on a paid-for basis. Remember, the LPP is, not, doesn't seek, is, a, is a shared service, doesn't seek to return a surplus or a profit, just cover our costs. So, you know, please be, be aware that there, there, there is this slight shift now in the way we treat things. Um, the three-year saving target for this work stream of, of £12 million plus. Pharmacy, well, pharmacy, obviously, probably the most well-established, most successful of the clinical networks, been around a long time, predates LPP, clearly. Um, a long list of initiatives, a lot of new initiatives up there, which is great. Um, interestingly here, I guess, the, and again, talk to the team outside, but, you know, an investment here in mental, a mental health pharmacist and also a cancer specialist pharmacist to allow you know, those areas of, of, of pharmacy to be really addressed and targeted a little bit more in depth for the first time. And certainly those mental health trusts out there, I think, will be pleased to see um, the addition of a mental health pharmacist to that that specialist network that we've already got established. Um, a three-year saving target, unsurprisingly quite a large one for these guys because of the, the size of the spend, £72 million. Pounds. Agency and professional services, well, as I said before, this is one that's always going to be close to my heart. Um, you'll see here a slight, a, 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 an absolute maintenance in the clinical staffing frameworks, which we've de started developing a few years ago and now have a full complement of clinical staffing uh, agency frameworks. And in professional services, a, a move into slightly more, as I would say, uh, strategic offering in terms of the things like the new payrolling framework and HR administration and transactional recruitment framework that I know several trusts are already making good use of. We're going to complement that um, with, a, uh, with an offering in transactional finance as well, just to allow trusts to really think about their back office and if they are going down the, the road of, of perhaps wanting you know, an externally provided shared service, which is another word for outsourcing, um, we have, we have a, an offering there. Um, again, an area where we will be offering, and we already are successfully de delivering some um, more bespoke advice and support on a on a time and materials basis. A three-year saving target here of £30 million. Pounds. Estates and facilities, looks like a short list. Actually, when you, when you consider what's in this list, it's absolutely ginormous. Um, soft facilities in itself, you know, that covers everything from waste, which obviously will continue as a, as a, a bit of a jewel in the crown in this area, to security, to hotel services, portering, catering, security. A um, couple of new ones there as well, uniforms um, and... Advisory services, again, very, very specific, PFI-type advice. We have expertise now in the work stream with, with Robert Anthony, who's the, the new work stream lead, who's one of the art, original architects of PFI, knows a lot about it. and be delighted to talk to you about this area. Um, grab him outside, he's here. Um, an overall three-year saving target of, of, of over 30 million. Um, I'm speeding up a little bit because I'm getting the message here. So, 88 initiatives shortlisted. The plan will change. You know, what we, what we set out to do today won't necessarily be what we do in, uh, delivered in three years. Some things will come in from left field. Some things we will undoubtedly decide not to pursue. A savings target of £300 million pounds, um, with a minimum ROI um, uh, of, 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 of 8 to 1 or so. Hopefully, you're getting the you're getting the favour that we are rebalancing our, our efforts. We are re refocusing on core NHS areas: medical, surgical, data and enablement, pharmacy, clinical agency staffing, but still recognising the, the huge value that we can bring in in other areas um, and allowing also for vari value through our non-core activities. Right. In conclusion. Two more in-depth um, presentations coming, one on the benchmarking from, from Lorraine and the medical director's view from Dr. Steve Ryan. Um, but as I say, the work streams are here. 
please take the chance to, to go through the work plan and have a think how they may, um, how they may benefit your own organisations <laughs> and potentially how you might engage and support some of these, uh, these, these initiatives. Um, we do do more than just a core offering. And to echo Mario, um, if you continue to engage with us, then collectively we can do more. Um, but, you know, we can only come so far. You, our members, need to, need to uh, do your bit as well. And with that, I, I thank you very much.